Welcome to the Millionaire Car Salesman Podcast, the number one resource for automotive sales professionals, managers, and owners to learn how to make money, accumulate wealth, and to all out ball out in the auto industry. And now your hosts, Sean V. Bradley and L.A. Williams. Hey everybody, this is Sean V. Bradley, president of Dealer Synergy and the creator of the Millionaire Car Salesman Group. And today is a very special pop-up session and we are gonna be uh, rocking with an amazing internet director. And uh, again, we just got the news today that, uh, that Platinum Mitsubishi is the number one, you ready? The number one volume Mitsubishi dealership in the United States of America. One more time. The number one volume Mitsubishi dealership in the United States of America. And so we have the uh, pleasure to speak to the internet director, Jason Coons. But before I bring Jason into the mic, um, I wanted to share with you, um, AutoWeb did this case study with him and this guy is amazing. He had a 530% increase uh, with AutoWeb leads and obviously the dealer synergy CRM process. And what's crazy is he's not even an active dealer synergy client. He is using the dealer synergy CRM processes and he's on Bradley on demand. He's on our virtual training platform. But uh, this is insane here. Look at this. He went from selling 25 units a month online to 135 units a month online. And I also want to bring to the, to the mic, we've got the incredible, the awesome Beth Pilot from AutoWeb. How you doing, girl? All right, what's up, man? How are we doing? Good. How are you doing today? I am doing great. So what I want to be able to do is um, I, I want to just jump in. Jason, say hello to everybody, man. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, that's good. All right, so Jason, am I accurate with what I just said? Or is, is it really true that, that your Mitsubishi store just got designated as the number one volume dealership in the United States? Yeah, that's correct. They just reached out to the owner with a congratulatory, uh, congratulatory text message this afternoon or this morning. Well, that's pretty exciting. And then I also uh, I also saw that the the chairman or CEO for Mitsubishi uh, manufacturer from I was it Japan they they flew in and actually met with you guys. Yeah, they went to the both stores here. Um, you know, one in Mechanicsburg and one in Lancaster. They were doing like an East Coast tour, and they picked five stores to come in and uh, take a look at, and uh, two of them were ours. Man, that's pretty exciting. You know, that's pretty exciting. So, so Beth, I, I want to start with you just because I want to frame this uh, in a second because AutoWeb is a, is a publicly traded company, correct? That's correct. Okay. And, and you've been in business since 1995. Is that, is that about right? Yep. All right. So that's a long freaking time. I mean, that's like 26 years if my math skills are, are there. And because you guys are a publicly traded company, it's not like a lot of bullshit that like, people spin in marketing. Like, you know, you can't because you've got a board. So can you go through the process of what you guys have to do to vet out when you do a case study like you like I just showed about uh, Jason Store? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously what we look for and what we need to do is we need to see proof in the numbers. You can say as any dealer, hey, I did this number, but we really want to see the numbers. We really want to see the stats. We really want to see how those numbers came about because not only is it about the numbers, it's about the story behind the numbers. We really want to see how you did it, what you did, and what you take it to get there. So first of all, obviously the numbers are going to be the first thing that we're looking at when we're looking at something like this case study, but also the story behind the numbers. And we want to make sure you know, we're putting our best foot forward. We only want to highlight dealers that are reputable and dealers with their numbers back up everything that we're selling. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, it took like about three and a half months. It took over a quarter of a year to go through the vetting process to validate this. Is that correct, Beth? Yep. That's correct. So, so guys, that's pretty crazy. Now, now Jason, back to you, sir. This is on our first rodeo, man, right? You were, you were part of the, the whole, the, the Bob Ruth team that went from 75 cars to 375, 317 cars. But I think when you were there, you took it to 250. What was the, large, the, the largest number that you did? Yeah, 256. 
356, you know, so I, again, shout out to Casey, the internet director there that got it to 317, but you were on a, a, on a team that you led the team that took the store from 75 cars to 256. And, and when you left and, and you went to the other organization, to the, to the platinum organization, you, this was, can you tell us a little bit about it? It, was, it, it didn't have anything there. It, it didn't have an infrastructure or anything. Tell us what you did and how you did it. Yeah, right. Correct. It was a brand new startup. They've never, They've always toyed with the idea of doing BDC, but never really like went full fledged. Um, it was kind of just being handled by the sales staff, and um, you know, obviously, I had reached out to Mike when um, you know I had said to him, I think that we should get together and discuss BDC. He was a local dealer here, and uh, I heard about him because so I knew he was at your conference. That's kind of how I met him the first time in Houston. And then you know, once we got here and got on board, you know, we immediately realized we needed to go you know, full board. So we, we kind of looked and said, well, we, we're not, we're not responding to leads properly. The owner's getting calls that people aren't calling back and no fault of their own. They were just busy and smaller at that time. So at that particular time, it started the major growth process for this company. But what we did is we just took a look at everything that's been going on, you know, like CRM, which has been solutions that's being utilized here that we need to make changes. We need to put processes in place. We need to have a system where we can follow it. It's easy to follow with a follow-up can get done, and then also, like, um, you know, structuring the team. So once we got all that in place, we started looking at growing our team, and we went from, like, two people to six people within about a month. Um, we're looking to hire about two or four more people to continue the growth. Okay, so the, the first thing I heard you say was CRM, and, and again, I'm not shy. We helped you put the CRM processes in at Dealer Synergy. How important, as an Internet director, would you say having the CRM set up correctly is? I mean, it's super important because obviously prior to coming here, it wasn't. And even where I worked previously, it probably wasn't set up properly until we brought you on board. So once your programs went in it and your structure went in, your status, you know, everything went into Vin Solutions that you guys implement, it changes everything because there's, it does a lot for you, you know, for the emails, but we can get into all that, but like it just creates it's super important, basically, to answer your question. I mean, without that, without that change, um, I don't think we'd have the success we're having today without it. So, and here's the reason why I'm doing this with AutoWeb, because, again, the, I, I, I get frustrated, Jason, when I hear that people say that leads suck. Let, let's cut through the bullshit right here. When you have a publicly traded company that's officially accredited for, for starting and launching automotive internet sales in the United States or in the world. I mean, so I want to repeat that, America, just so you understand. Auto by Tell, which is the, the, you know, the name of the company that they changed to AutoWeb, but it's the same company. It's AutoWeb is Auto by Tell. They were the ones that invented automotive internet sales in 1995. And so when, when somebody tells me that leads suck, I, they're full of shit. They don't know what they're talking about because it's not the leads that suck. Usually, mostly what it is, is you don't have the right processes in place on handing the leads. You do not have the right CRM in place. You don't have the right people in place and or you don't have the right amount of people and or you don't have the right infrastructure. So let's start there. Is that a true statement to your to your opinion? Yeah, 100% true. Okay. And so good. So I want to frame this out. It, it doesn't matter where you get the leads from. We'll talk about the different quality later on, but you know, wherever you get your opportunities to do business, wherever you get email leads from, whether they're from the manufacturer, they're from third-party providers, they're from your websites, they're from online classifieds, they're from social media, wherever you need to follow up with those, those opportunities. And what happens is that most CRMs are not set up the right way. The number that we use is 90% of CRMs are broken or not set up correctly, meaning the actual plans, the CRM processes, the templates, the scripting, the, uh, the content, the HTML, the videos, etc. So when, when that got put into place, what would you say the biggest value was for you at, at, at the dealership? Is it that you had the automation that you didn't have to stress out or was it the frequency and the cadence of the communication to the prospects? I think it's both actually you just hit you know hit them both both points perfectly i mean the cadence is, is super important the way it's, it's structured to you know do the follow-up do the text messages and and then you know the automation part of it to where they're not really tracking down or chasing down constantly doing emails where if they can't reach a contact you know if people are on your program that's how it's set up but i mean i think both of those points that you have are, are key components of what's helped us be successful 
So Beth from AutoWeb, you guys have so much data because, and I, I was shocked when I interviewed uh, Jared Rowe on, on, on the radio show and against all odds, um, he told me that there's been over a hundred million cars sold through AutoWeb. Is it, is it, I think the number's larger than that, but I don't know what it is. So yeah. you, how many cars have been sold through AutoWeb, Auto Buy, Sell? It's, it's been over, it has been over that amount. So yes, we are, we can attribute and we attribute it all back to Polk, which can show how many of the leads that we sent have equated into car sales and we have over a million. That's correct. And hundred million. Yes. Okay. So, so uh, like people that are listening people. to this, do you understand what I just said? There is a company that is directly responsible for over 100 million cars being sold in the automotive industry in the last 26 years. It's probably more than a hundred million. So when you tell me that, that, uh, that leads suck, you're out of your fucking mind. Okay. Because there's no way that leads can suck and, and, and still equate to a hundred million car sales getting sold. So what you got to look at, it's like turning and saying, you know, when you go into a restaurant that is a five-star restaurant that serves like Kings and Queens and presidents, you know what I mean? Again, that's something's wrong. No, it's probably you. You know what I mean? It's probably, and, and, and people don't want to take ownership and say, you know what? Yeah, we have a shitty process. Yeah, I, I have, you know, the parts manager's daughter is my internet director and she has no idea what she's doing. Or I have a salesperson that sucks on the floor and I decided because I'm a genius that I'm going to pick the worst person on the floor. I'm going to make that my internet person. I mean, when you make bad decisions like that, it's easy to blame the third party provider. Jason, am I right or wrong? No, 100% right. All right, so let's let's get into this. So so Beth, and she's like, oh my god, this is this is this is this, we're getting real here. Yeah, because this the dealers need to hear this. Dealers yeah. need to understand. I agree that you know this is not a joke. How the hell do you take? It's a Mitsubishi. No offense, but it's not a Ford, Chevy, or Ferrari. It's Mitsubishi. How do you come from nothing to something? To being a zero to a hero from twenty five cars online to one thirty five. That's five hundred and thirty percent increase. That's insane. So Beth, wh- what do you find? What are people? looking for when, when, when they submit a lead to auto web or to third party providers, what is the psychology of, of, of a shopper in, in February, 2021? Yeah. And, and, you know, you hit the nail on the head. It doesn't matter though, if it's Mitsubishi or it's Ford, they're submitting a lead for a car that you have on your lot. So whether it be a new Mitsubishi or a used Mitsubishi, they're submitting a lead for a car that you actually have on your lot. That's the most important thing. They're not submitting a lead for a Ford. They're not submitting a lead for a Toyota that you just happened to get. With our lead, you're getting a lead for something that you have on your lot. So there's no, there's no ambigu- ambiguity on that. There's just, you know, it's going to be the straight lead. And that lead, it's going to have your phone number. It's going to have your email address. It's going to have your physical address. It's going to have your phone number. Sure, wait a minute, Beth, 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 I'm looking for magic. I'm looking for, I, I, for $20 or $18 or $17 a lead or whatever the hell the lead costs. I'm looking for magic. I'm looking for deals. I'm looking for commissions. And damn it, I'm giving you $16, woman. $16. I want a deal spotted at 5G's, you know, a copy. It's, and it's not, we don't, as you always say, it's not the magic beans. We do not have the magic beans. We are not here to make the magic. We give you the tools for you to make the magic. Obviously, it's going to be, like we said, it's going to be in your process. It's going to be in your CRM. We give you the tools to make it, but that's all going to be. They're not but magic. Yet, but <laughs> Beth, but yet there's dealers that are dropping $47,000 on PPC and crappy yep. websites that yep. you have 130 something leads. To spend $118, $130 per lead makes no sense to me. So. Yep. So Jason, give us some, some tips. How, how do you, what do you feel is the best way to handle auto web leads and, and other leads? Okay, so let's just say that Beth is a prospect, you know, and she's looking at a, a 2021 Mitsubishi Eclipse or a pre-owned vehicle. She's looking for a vehicle. She submitted an auto web lead to you, right? How do you handle that lead? What is your process that you have? So as soon as the lead comes in, you know, obviously the, the first goal is to get the person on the phone. Um, we preach phone calls here. Um, so they do a phone call, um, and then immediately upon either contacting or non-contacting a person, um, and we put into a status in the VIN solutions under one of those two, and then we follow that up with a text message and an email. Um, and we have recently started implementing video uh, to our uh, follow-up as well. Um, so then, you know, it goes through a process of every day, you know, they're making, you know, two phone calls a day for the first 10 days, and then they're also, you know, texting or emailing. Um, 
So immediately, like when a text message goes out, it's usually just, hey, this is, you know, some, you know, Jason from Platinum, you know, Mitsubishi, we just tried to, you know, reach you a moment ago and missed you. What's your preferred method of communication, text or phone? I mean, you know, if they don't answer the phone, typically within a couple minutes, you get a text that's fine. And then we go back to the, pro you know, start back over by trying to get them back on the phone uh, to go over the process. But it, it's heavily phone and text uh, mixed in the first 10 days. There's a lot of messages going out. So what we, so what would you say do you have the highest engagement on? Would it be text messages or phone calls? Great question, Sean. Let's get the answer after we hear from a sponsor. At the very first dealer e-process keynote, Gino Cipperoni and Sam Vukas introduced new tools and strategies to drive conversion, new designs to increase customer engagement, and new technologies to dominate the competition. Visit dealereprocess.com forward slash keynote to watch and see what's new in 2021. Don't be the last one with your hand up at the auction. VinQ Vehicle Buying Center gives dealers the digital and in-store tools you need to buy direct from the public. On average, inventory bought from the public grosses $1,200 higher on the front end alone. VinQ turns buying cars direct from the public into a business. The most profitable dealerships in the country are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in additional front end gross. Private party acquisition starts with VinQ. See it at VinQ dot com text messages for sure and then follow up by phone calls okay so that that's let's talk about that for a second because i find it it blows me away that in 2021 there are a lot of dealerships a lot of internet departments a lot of salespeople that are still not engaging with text messages as much as they should be beth what what do you say to that like to, to dealers that for whatever reason they're not engaging in text messages is that a smart decision to do I mean, that's ridiculous. Anybody who's not engaging in texting, you know, Sean and I, you and I even spoke about it. We've seen it at your conferences. Look at your phone. Everybody should just look at your phone and see how many text messages you have that are not read versus how many emails. Sean, show us your phone. How many emails do you have today that are unread? Okay. So this is funny, guys. <laughs> so watch. Like, I'm going to put this on the screen. I'm going to have them read it. What does it say? 37,006. I can't read the rest. 640. <laughs> 640. There we go. 639. Okay. And then how many text messages? 73. 73. I'm like, okay, there. Now I can see your screen. Now, okay, yeah, so, now I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. No, but nobody would believe me. Would you believe that I have 37,000 emails that I haven't read? No. I mean, that's crazy. No, but, but what it is for the record is that I have a lot of companies that I own. And so, yeah, I mean, I get, I, you know, this is what happens when you own 11 companies and shit like that. There's a lot of emails. Yeah. And so, yeah. So the point being is 37,000 versus 75. You know, so can you explain your point? Yeah, the point is more people are apt to read your text messages versus emails. You're going to see it pop up. You're going to see an alert on your screen usually when a text message comes in. And, and usually it's a very easy way of communicating with people. Some people don't like communicating, especially a lot of the younger generation does not like communicating over the phone. They feel uncomfortable. They feel pressure on them. When you're on texting, you're controlling. You know, you can control the conversation. You can, you know, you don't feel the immediate pressure. If you want to wait five minutes to respond, you can respond in five minutes. So I think, you know, a lot of people prefer texting because you can do it on your own time verse, and you can, bring, you can pick it up again too. So let's just say you leave the conversation tomorrow you like oh yeah i forgot about that car i was talking about you can pick up the conversation and see where you were too so i think those two reasons really is why i would encourage texting okay i, I would agree 1000 percent. jason you want to add anything about how how convenient or how powerful texting is i mean it's super powerful i mean it it took me a little bit of time even when i worked at bob ruth Ford to to want to get on that page because you know we wanted to just do phone call phone call phone call but text messaging is, is obviously we're going to communicate whichever way the customer wants to communicate but, you know, if they respond to email, we're going to respond to email and then try to push for a phone call and then go from there. But, it, I mean, text message to me is, is the way it is. I mean, I see it every single day and when I'm reaching out to people and following up and it's just they don't respond to phone calls or don't answer or they'll answer and say they're at work and you text and then you have an appointment in, within a couple minutes, like Beth said. I like you can pick up where you, where you left off and all points were, you know, good valid points there that everybody just made. 
Here's what I want to do also for everybody that's tuned in in the Millionaire Car Salesman Facebook group. I know I see a couple comments. If you have comments, if you've got questions for, for Jason, if you've got you know uh, questions for Beth, please just put them into the comment section here. And obviously, if you're listening to the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast, uh, you really can't put any questions into your radio or into your uh, you know your phone, but it's all good. You could run and DM them later. But I, I want this to be interactive. The more that, That's why I'm doing these pop-up sessions like this is that I want people to be able to comment, ask questions. You got two subject matter experts. You've got one that's a major lead source provider, and then you've got one who is the number one Mitsubishi dealership in the United States right now. So, you know, don't be shy. Now let's get back into it. Okay. Email. So, um, you guys are, are, are dropping a lot of emails, sending a lot of emails through the, the automated email action plans through templates. Do you do any broadcast emails like on a monthly basis, anything like that? through campaigns through VIN. Yeah, we do those. We do, well, we do, we've done that more with video recently than we have just, um, just do an email campaign, campaign, excuse me, campaign blast, but we've definitely trip, you know, put more of an emphasis on, um, doing videos here. They have like their own, um, two, two guys that are really good here at putting together videos and doing speak, you know, speaking on the camera, speaking on camera. So we, we do a lot of videos with them and then we filter those into VIN and send them out to customers through campaigning. And we've had really good success doing that as well. Okay, so emails, phone calls, text messages, but now you're stepping up video emails and video text messages. Let's talk about this. Ha- have you seen a higher engagement and conversion by using video emails or video text messages? Yeah, even with like those video campaigns that we did through even email and uh, through email, and then we sold, you know, I think five off of just one campaign on a weekend where it was just about special finance. And we, we'll give you this for your trade. And it's just getting out to people. It got out to all the customers. Oh, stop, stop, that, that, that was a good nugget. You just, you, you're just like mumbling through that. I apologize, Jason. Like that was some good shit right there. So go back, be really specific. You just sold five cars in a weekend campaign. Tell us slowly about what this campaign was. Yeah. So it was a video that was put together um, by Austin, just talking about the, the pre-owned locations. We have four locations, two Mitsubishi, two pre-owned. And it was talking about, um, you know, what we can do for them, what we guarantee them for their trade, about our process. We make it fast and simple, seamless. And it was probably less than 30 second video that they put together, but real good editing, you know. And when we sent it out, there was really good engagement. It was read by a lot of majority of the customers that, you know, looked into, you know, that are in Vin Solutions. And then it just, as you started following, you can obviously in Vin Solutions, there's when you run campaigns, you can manage them and check the status of sales. And when I came back Monday, there was five sold from Saturday. So from Friday to Saturday, they sold five. Okay. So Beth, do you have any advice on this? That's pretty damn awesome. And I don't know, I don't believe that enough dealerships or internet departments are taking advantage of broadcast mailing out there, you know, like, uh, like what Jason's saying. So do you have any advice that uh, like uh, on some suggestions that you could, you know, give our yeah. audience? Okay. Like what type of broadcast? I, I love video. All right. Let me say that. I love video for introductions. I think it makes emails more personal when you say, Hey, this is your sales rep. I'm the BDC. I look forward to meeting you. When you put a face with a name, you personalize the sale. So I love it for that reason. I also love it for walk arounds. I think these day and age where people are not really, not everyone's comfortable going to a dealership with all COVID with the safety issues. I think the walk arounds and the video are invaluable. And I love walk arounds for video. In addition to that, I love specials and messaging from the GM. Any messaging you have from your GM about any specials, I think are great to grace great use of video and another thing any service messages or hey even our service departments i know we're talking about sales but let's talk about how your whole dealership can use video service hey mr mr bartlett i saw that this part of you know this wasn't working in your car when we were doing an inspection would love to show you the video of this is what it looks like this is how it should look you know use video that way there's many ways to use video in the dealership No, let me jump in. Tag, I want some. All right, so here's some facts. Video is such a powerful medium. People prefer to watch video more than reading, writing, talking, texting, and regular communications. Video, video, video is powerful. The amount of video consumption, I think it's like six hours a day people consume video, 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 video. It's insane. Um, In addition to that, video, one minute of video is equivalent to 1.8 million written words. Facts. With video, you've got sight, sound, motion, and emotion. Sight, sound, motion, and emotion. 
And specifically to, to emails, video emails increase read open rates by 300%. Again, increasing by 300%, why would we not be using video? Now, uh, there's two different ways that you could use video. Like what Beth was just talking about, you could have either like a bomb bomb. I'm a big fan of bomb bomb. Just quick commercial. If you go to bombbomb.com forward slash dealer synergy, it's pretty awesome. But then there's other companies like True Video. Shout out to True Video. They're really great, especially with fix ops. And then there's Co Video and there's things like that. But having a video platform where you're able off of an app or your desktop, create those personalized messages is one thing. What Beth just said, that's one strategy. But what me and Jason have done, we, we've taken it to another level, right, Jason? What we've done is we've looked at the, oh, you like that voice, right, people? Yeah. That's funny. I guess, yeah. <laughs> All right, because this is going to be good. I can tell, right? So what happens is this. See, I got my radio. I've been practicing on radio to like millions See of that. people, stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm getting my radio on right now. So the reality is this. You have a CRM, and in a CRM, you have automated action plans. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to demonstrate really quick this, boom, and we're going to go in, and we're going to go into Vin Solutions. We're going to go into my store first. So, folks, I, I deal with hundreds and hundreds of, of clients specifically for CRM. So I work with every CRM on the planet um, for the most part. Oops, hold on. Got a new password. And then what I'm going to do, whoop, here, hold on, give me a second. I think that should be it. Sorry. When you're talking about text messages, I got the most text messages in the like last 10 minutes. I think I've gotten all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, come on, man. I don't want to hit the wrong thing and mess this up. You know? It's funny. Yeah, I might have typed something in wrong, guys. Sorry. We're going to get there. So this is what happens when you uh, are just freestyle. Yep, I can't get in uh, right now. I apologize. I'll just kind of do this freestyle without going into VIN. Is I was going to show you when you were in a CRM, right? When you're in a CRM, you have an action plan or a CRM process. So, for example, AutoWeb lead comes in. Uh, let's just say Karen Bradley submitted an internet purchase request on a 2021 Mitsubishi Eclipse like we were talking about, right? Then what you got to do in the CRM is you have to map out, you know, instantaneously what's the response. Maybe it's an autoresponder. And then maybe, uh, you know, let's just say a minute later, you're going to send your first video email out. I would recommend that that would probably be a value package proposition, meaning what's different and better about what we do here at Platinum Mitsubishi, yada, yada, yada. And then you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna schedule your phone calls, your text messages, your video emails, your video text messages, your social media DMs your uh, Apple FaceTime, your Skypes, so you're going you're gonna to schedule your activities. Jason, are you with me right now? Do you agree this is what we did with you guys? Yes, 100%. Okay. So, but now, but follow me on this. Most people, they only put text, Beth. They only put like email, phone call, or have you. They're not creating and integrating with HTML actual videos. What we recommend, what we did with Jason, and what we do with all the deals that we work with, we say, look, if it was me, don't just have a static or basic action plan in your CRM. What you want to be able to do is create videos. Like you said, Beth, like an introductory, you know, like, a, you know, hey, introducing yourself. My name is Sean Bradley. I'm the internet coordinator of BDC Rep. Or, hey, I'm Jason Coons. I'm the internet director. Or, hey, I'm, you know, uh, Brian, blah, blah, blah. I'm the general manager. Okay, that's there. But then you could have different videos for different things. For example, you could have a video explaining your new uh, touchless service, okay? Meaning like, again, there's people that with COVID don't want to come into the dealership. So here is the way that we do business, okay? So we could do almost all this through the phone and internet, whether it's through digital retail or it's through Zoom and schedule an expedited delivery process for curbside pickup, or we could, you know, deliver to your home or office. Regardless, if you have these video messages that are put in, here's another one. If somebody says, you know, if somebody deads an internet lead, let's say somebody deads, you know, Karen Bradley's auto web lead, having a video from either, you know, Jason is the internet director or having a video from Mike Durazio, who's the dealer principal that says, hey, um, I see that you're no longer interested in a vehicle, right? I see that you changed your mind or you bought elsewhere. I want to just make sure it wasn't something that we did. These are like safety valves or virtual TO videos. So my point being is that I really believe having a strategic strategy 
on video content, not that's just manually created like in real time, that you create it once with motion graphics, animation, etc. If you've got nice videos and you're, you're sprinkling them through out your follow-up process, your sales process, your dead deal process, your soul process, it's going to magnify the, the, the results that you're going to get. You're going to have a higher engagement and higher conversion. Jason, from your experience, am I speaking accurately or, or no? No, you're definitely, I mean, I mean, yes, you definitely are speaking accurately. Everything you said is, is spot on, brother. Okay, and so uh, can you share with some some videos that you're using at your store for for lead follow up or lead handling or objections or testimonials? What are the what are the best videos that you have? We'll find out right after this message. Attention auto dealers. You need an opportunity to do business to do business. AutoWeb is one of the largest suppliers of high quality leads. I mean high quality buyers. At a 10% closing ratio, you will be at less than $190 per car sold. Don't just settle for what you get. AutoWeb can fully customize your results through targeted markets and or zip codes. And as a partner, you will get premium placement within search results. Who better to do that than literally the people that invented automotive internet sales? If you want to sell more cars more often and more profitably, then you need AutoWeb. Auto Credit Express is the leader in subprime auto financing. For over 20 years, we have served the online consumer working to match the best dealers with consumers who need their help securing financing. With more than 250,000 leads per month, Auto Credit Express is the authority for dealers who understand that the special finance deal generates a higher gross profit. We've worked hard to innovate our solutions, bringing you buyer assist to drive consumer text engagement building out robust solutions to help the underserved Spanish-speaking community. We now deliver proof of income on our leads through our proprietary STIPS feature and are building dealer-branded social media marketing campaigns to help you, the dealers, build your brand. Contact Auto Credit Express today to learn how we can help you own your market for subprime finance. Sell more cars with higher gross profit and partner with Auto Credit Express today mention the millionaire car salesman podcast for a special discount today oh the ones that we've done we we're just getting like getting ready to do those because we got a, a green screen a mic built here in our corporate office because our bdc is in a centrally located corporate office so we created a green screen mike built that for for our downstairs studio and that's where we're going to actually be implementing a lot of the videos that you were just talking about um, the ones that we've had success for so far, the, you know, are the ones we just talked about a little bit ago, reaching out to people on the Mitsubishi leads about, you know, the promotions that they're having, like Beth talked about, you know, maybe just showing them like some discounts or special leasing. Um, and then we've done recently the company, um, Mike's been sharing them on social media where they've been going around and having salespeople in each four, one of each four of our locations, each salesperson is like introducing themselves, talking about the company why people should come here, how we make them feel when they get here. It's basically everything you guys are saying. And it, it, it's like the value, like why you should buy from those individuals and the company. And that has had some good success as well. Um, one of our managers, Anthony, um, he posted something doing that such thing, like a two, it's probably a two or three minute video. And he got a, a, like a response immediately. And that person came in. I don't know if they end up buying a car, but I do know that he had gotten reached out to immediately upon the video being put on social media strong. Beth, what advice do you have? What videos, again, I know you mentioned before, but there's more people that, that are tuning in and listening here from your experience, n not the, not the ones that you had mentioned about the custom ones, because I, I like that idea, but I want to get any other feedback. What have you seen from dealers that are producing high quality videos, especially these large dealer groups, which gets the biggest engagement and conversions? Yep. I love the green screen. I think he mentioned too, I mean, every, any company who you decide to go with to do your video, you should ask them about including that in your package. First of all, most companies that are doing the video will hopefully give those out to the dealers to use as well. Cause I think it makes it look sharper. You know, they also can assist in editing and making it look a little more professional than instead of done in your backyard. Um, I also think as far as video, the most 
successful ones that I've seen that are more the, I won't say generic, but ones that you can reuse and reuse. It's not about a specific car. One I like, you said, is COVID. COVID safety. I think that's one of the top ones that I've seen. Everybody yes. wants to know that you're wearing a mask. Everyone wants to know what you're doing, that you're cleaning the cars. Everyone wants to know that they can bring a car to you, which is another great option. And I think it needs to be mentioned across the boards. So I think the safety ones are the best ones we're seeing. I think um, a warm GM welcome too. It doesn't need to be something specific, but something that's coming from your GM saying, hey, you know, I see you submitted a lead. We're here. We to answer. I'm personally here to answer any questions you have. If, even if a dealer, like he puts his email out there on there too, I think it gives more of an intimate reaction. And even though it's generic, it can go out to every single lead. I think it is a more intimate gesture, I guess. No, I, I would agree. And Jason, from my, from my recollection, don't you guys use video to confirm appointments? Uh, yeah, they, it's it's like that's probably like 60, 40, 60, like that we do it 40 percent. But it's going to be like full fledged come probably like by March 1st, once we get everything, wherever long it takes to get it to Vin Solutions, get it uploaded. We're going to be doing a lot of that when we do a mixture of phone calls, text and uh, we will do occasional videos to confirm. But we we are stepping our game up with that now that we have the in-house ability to do to do such. Okay, no, that, that's awesome. But you are doing some, again, I mean, you're yeah. doing more than most people. The fact that it's not 100% time, but right. you're utilizing it. Um, what about when you, when, you, when, you, when you are forced to give price? I know that I, I trained you that, you know, if you're going to give price, and sometimes you have to give price, especially in this climate or what have you, but I don't recommend just giving a static email or static text message. If you have to give price, I believe that you should be giving price through a video text message or a video email. So what do you think about that, Jason? Yeah, I mean, I do agree to that. I mean, it's the pricing isn't as much as an issue here for our dealership, I think. It's, it is for some just because of the type of, we know it's a we're heavy special finance subprime. Um, so that's not typically the main issue that we deal with. It's more, more of credit. Okay, good, 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 good. good but good. you're right. Okay, so this is good. So let's go back into it. So let's just say we talked about CRM, we talked about the emails, we talked about the templates, we talked about video. Um, what other best practices, Beth, do you, do you have for, for lead handling and for, for maximizing these, these, these opportunities? Yeah, I think for all leads, I think we need to stay away from where they came from. When you're having that first conversation, focus on the car, focus on what they've submitted. It doesn't matter where the lead came from. It came from AutoWeb, TrueCar. I think when you're having that conversation to be, hi, I see you're interested in a Ford F-150. You're, you know, you're, you're addressing it as to them. Like, I mean, you can leave where the lead came throughout. I think if you focus on the car that they're requesting and what they're looking at, and it, another great thing that we didn't mention is always asking, you know, are you shopping for yourself? I think that's a really good question that sometimes we get away from. People sometimes are buying cars for their wives, for their sons, for their daughters. So I think, you know, the more questions that you're asking that are gearing, are you buying it for yourself? Would you consider a used? We all know that a lot of people defect from new to used. It's 40%. It's the latest number I saw that defect from new to used. I think when we're asking the questions and asking for alternates, you also open up for other cars that you may have or to change your discussion. It may completely change the path you're going down. So Jason, what do you think about what she just said? Like, like, is that something that you guys are doing right now? Or is it something that you like to implement? Or uh, what's your opinion on that? Again, the thing that she just said that just stuck out to me is asking them, you know, is this vehicle for you? Or, you know, who's this vehicle going to be for that simple question? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, it's oftentimes like through just monitoring VIN solutions for leads, um, you know, and seeing what's coming in and, and everything and making sure things are getting taken care of and marked sold. A lot of times you can see that the original person that came in on the lead gets either switched to somebody else or they create a new lead and then we merge it and we figure it out. But that is, that is a great question to, to implement. And I also like what she just said, too. If you guys caught that, she basically said that there's a defection rate of 40%. That means that that 40% of people that submit a new car purchase request are going to buy um, a used car. And then on reverse, non-Mitsubishi, because uh, Mitsubishi, I think, is even better. Non-Mitsubishi, it's about 20 to 22% of, of used car uh, leads are going to wind up converting to new cars. I think that number has got to be astronomically higher for Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi, to your point, is a special finance 
Lance Carr. There's a lot of people that 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 might not qualify for a brand new Toyota or a GMC or something like that, but they damn sure could qualify for a brand new Mitsubishi. And so I see a lot of times that you could flip somebody from a used car opportunity into a, a brand new Mitsubishi. Am I am I correct with that, Jason? Am I correct with that, Beth? Hundred percent. That happens all the time here. So what would you say that, that the flip is for you, for Mitsubishi? Like how many people, like what would you say ratio-wise? Like national average is 20 as far as AutoWeb's concerned. I would put it at 40%, but I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. You're the one that's on the field, uh, on the front lines. What would you su- yeah. suggest it is? It's probably a little hard. I mean, it might be close yeah. to 50 here. I mean, because it's, they're really good at the two Mitsubishi, loca- all locations are great here, by the way. But I mean, the two stores have great, special finance people and desk managers working the deals and we'll bring them in on a 2019 Ram and they're leaving in a 2020 Mirage. So that's what we do all day long. I mean, it's day and you know, you we just, we find out their needs, but say you need transportation, not a $35,000 vehicle. No, I, I like it. So Beth, do you have any uh, modifying data or just an opinion based on what we just said for Mitsubishi dealers? Cause again, it's the, and same thing Hyundai yeah. and Kia. Yeah, no, you hit the nail on the head when you said with Mitsubishi, so many people don't think they qualify for a new car, don't think they can get it. It's not in their budget. And when you actually sit down, since Mitsubishi does have such great financing opportunities, and they really, you know, they appeal to that maybe lower on the credit score. We're just working to get that number up that they don't think they could get a new car. And, you know, there you go. So I agree. I I bet that number for Mitsubishi is at least 50 percent plus. Yeah, yeah so that's crazy. Fifty percent, uh, and I and I or plus, I, I would concur with that. Okay, so I think that we really, really, you know, caught the gist of this for CRM and for the templates and for that stuff. Let's transition, and we talked about process. Uh, Beth, can you share with us what are the typical things? that dealers do wrong, uh, you know, when, when handling leads the right way. So I'm going to ask the question again, what are the typical things that they do wrong and handling leads the right way? First, first and foremost, they do not follow up that they do not, they stop the follow up. You know, you should be following up five, 10, 50, 30, 60, 90. I would say 80% of our dealers stop after day 10. Which is crazy. That's it, it, crazy. It, it, now, I know I don't even have to ask Jason this because I done taught him well. I mean, he understands, but uh, that, that on average, the manufacturers for franchise dealers, this is obviously a little bit different for independents and, and buy here, pay here's, but a franchise, Jason, we lost your video. So uh, what I would say is that, there you go, he's back. <laughs> he's back. Okay. He is that from my research, on a new car, it's up to 90 days, okay? The meaning that if you've got a new purchase request, it's about a 90-day opportunity. However, and this is what I try to teach everybody, about 46% of people are gonna buy within the first 31 days. So you do have a large segment of people that are gonna buy, and I'm not saying they're gonna buy from you, they're gonna buy from somebody within the first 31 days. But that also means that 54%, more than half of the people, are never gonna buy within the first 30 days. So at Dealer Synergy, there's two time periods, 31 days or less, and day 32 to 90. And to Beth's point, you know, a lot of people don't have endurance. They think these leads are magical beans, what have you, and they're not equipped. They're not equipped to be able to follow up with that long-term follow-up. So Jason, can you share with us, how, how, how long do you follow up with these leads? Uh, new car leads are 90 days. Um... And then we, you know, we dead the lead or like you were talking about earlier, market loss. And then the uh, that same thing for, pre, well, pre-owned is 60 days. So for right. pre-owned is 60 with no contact. And for new cars, it's 90. Okay. So I'm gonna, we're going to hear this again. You, you're listening to a, a guy that is ranked at, like right now, literally is the number one Mitsubishi dealership in the United States of America. The CEO and chairman of Mitsubishi flew in and personally went to this dealership and shook the dealer's hand and toured and probably shook Jason's hand. Did you touch that guy? Was he, was he, was he special? <laughs> did you? I, I did I, not, I, okay. I, did I don't mean like in a weird guy. way. I'm just saying like, I mean, like he's the CEO of a major manufacturer. I mean, like, yeah, that's okay. great. That's funny. He met with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, in a I weird way, I'm just saying. You know, I, I would want to shake his hand. I mean, this guy's the the, the CEO chairman of the, of the major manufacturer. That's pretty yeah. badass. I mean, I'm not sure he's yeah, not going cool. to every Mitsu dealership in the country. And uh, so that's, that's a great awesome. opportunity. Hell yeah, you should be proud. So, so, so I mean, we got two stores. Well, they're both in one's number one and one's in the top thirty. So. 
the other one's in the top 30. I know, but and that just opened. So that tells you a lot. Yeah, no, it tells that you guys have a system. That's my point. So if you're listening to this, whether it's on the podcast or you're listening to this live right now on a live stream in the Millionaire Car Salesman Group, you're listening to a, a person, Jason Coons, that, that took the dealership from 25 to 135, 530% increase. And what he's saying to you is that he follows up with his leads for his new car leads for up to 90 days. He's following up with his used car leads and his special finance leads for 60 days. J.D. Power says, and I don't know what the updated data, the stat is, but before the pandemic, it was, Beth, I believe, nine to 11 attempts before you make the first contact. What is the auto web number? Do you have a number that you could validate? Yeah, it's right around nine. Okay, so nine. So I, I'll stick with nine. So you just heard this from Dealer Synergy and from AutoWeb. And AutoWeb is a publicly traded company that that number is they're saying on average it takes nine attempts, meaning nine emails, nine phone calls, nine text messages on average. Sometimes it takes 12, 15, 16 before they answer the damn phone or text first. So if you're dropping, Beth, Beth, you just said something that I, that's, I can't believe. That's like, I can't believe people that still listen to betas, you know, beta max tapes. <laughs> I can't believe that people listen to eight tracks, you know what I mean? Or watch beta max tapes or all that stuff. Uh, you know, I can't believe people have a VCR or a beeper. And so if, if you are only following up with leads for 10 days, I bet you have a VCR and a beeper and you have one of those, maybe a Don Johnson, like brick phone because you're <laughs> antiquated, you're antiquated. Jason, right or wrong? That's right. That's good. Good. Good analogy. Thank you. All right, great I'm gonna great roll analogy, here. actually. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Beth, okay, so that's one, like Count Chocolate. That's one, one <laughs> stupid mistake that dealers do. <laughs> Give me number two, two. What's the second thing that they do bad? We'll find out right after these messages, Mr. Bradley. Hundreds of dealers have switched to VinQ in 2020. For a limited time, VinQ will match any special trial offers the other guys are throwing out there. With VinQ, replace five systems with one solution. Market pricing, inventory management, wholesale, and private party acquisitions, advertising, and reconditioning. Don't miss out on the chance for better data, increased churn, and higher gross per sale. Stop competing on price alone and start competing on value with VinQ. Request a live look at VinQ.com. Attention auto dealers. You need an opportunity to do business to do business. AutoWeb is one of the largest suppliers of high quality leads. I mean, high quality buyers. At a 10% closing ratio, you will be at less than $190 per car sold. Don't just settle for what you get. AutoWeb can fully customize your results through targeted markets and or zip codes. And as a partner, you will get premium placement within search results. Who better to do that than literally the people that invented automotive internet sales? If you want to sell more cars more often and more profitably, then you need AutoWeb. Dealers don't scrub their leads. If you have a bad lead, you should ask for credit. They oh, my God. Drives yes, me but- yeah, but they bitch and complain. All oh, these things yes. suck because you don't keep track of stuff. Okay, so explain to them what that means. Again, break that down. Yeah, basically. So if we provide a dealer 100 leads and if there are bad leads, meaning there's duplicates, they're not in the market, they're under age, bad emails, bad phone numbers. If you're not requesting credit for those, you're paying for bad leads. Why are you going to pay? If you're going to sit there and say for bad leads, they're all bad, then why wouldn't you at least request credit? And so many dealerships do not. Now, Jason, so are you thoroughly doing that? Are you are you identifying any bad leads or duplicate leads and getting credits? Uh, I haven't submitted. I mean, yeah, we do that, but we haven't had that issue with AutoWeb so far. I mean, we we just we work those leads until until it's done, man, until it's dead. So we're we work it all the way to the end. I, any lead that comes in here is good for all of us. Here, but I'm going to give you guys a tip. So so Beth, don't get mad at me, but I, I got to keep it real. I keep it real. I keep it real, real. Uh-oh. That there's a there's an in, no it's not bad I'm only kidding there there's an <laughs> industry standard that I do know that the that the third party providers you know understand on, on approximate it's about a ten uh, you know percent to fifteen percent bogus slash you know duplicate ratio. And so, again, if you buy 100 leads, expect that 10 of them might be duplicate or bad because they're not perfect. You know what I mean? They're at the mercy of people submitting stuff in. They don't know if they went to AutoWeb, they went to TrueCar, they went to Cars Direct, they went to Car Gurus. But what I will tell you that I really respect and like about AutoWeb um, as a lead source provider is that if you work with your account rep, and this is what Beth said. Remember, the the internet director didn't even bring this up. The freaking rep said – 
look, we want to credit you. We want to replace those leads. We're not trying to take advantage of you. We're not pirates. Arr, you know what I mean? We're here to be your partner. And so, uh, again, you could tell that my wife hasn't let me out of the house because of COVID because yeah. I'm getting cabin fever over here. But um, I would recommend that you guys write this word down if you're not driving. You know what I mean? Listen to this podcast. Reconcile. 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 What that means is if, if you have... And I love that Jason, even though he's brilliant and he's a rock star and he's nationally recognized, he's still writing shit down. I mean, I respect that a lot, Jason. But reconcile. Think about it. Your, your, your bookkeepers, your accounts payable, accounts receivable, they reconcile. Whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, they reconcile the bank accounts. Why would you not reconcile? What you need to do is you need to have your CRM up. And you need to be able to have your, um, your back end. I know it's, it's eye control in auto web and every lead source provider has a back end tool. And first and foremost, you want to make sure you put apples, to apples. My CRM says that I had, you know, uh, 20 phone ups from auto web. Okay, great. I want to look at the back end of auto web and I want to verify that that's correct because sometimes those leads don't get to you or there's a glitch with the CRM and, or, or whatever problem there is. I want to know, did I first and foremost, before I worry about bad or duplicate, did I get what they say I got, you know, and then reconcile that. The next step of reconciliation is trying to identify if there were any bad leads, bogus leads, or duplicate leads. And then once you identify that, then you need to be able to have a simple conversation with your account manager. And it sounds like AutoWeb stands by their product. You know what I mean? I don't know about other third-party providers, but we at least know that Beth does because this is recorded <laughs> and people could go back and rewind and go to like, um, you know, timestamp you know, 23 minutes and 13 seconds. And uh, Beth said, you know, scrub your leads, reconcile. So Beth, I'm teasing, but you, you, you yeah. don't get mad when, when, when clients say to you, hey, Beth, I had like five or 10 bad leads. Do you get upset with that? No, and I think that means they're looking at it, which kind of brings us to another one. Make sure you're looking at what you're doing in addition to your leads. Look at your cost per sale. You have to monitor your leads and see what's working for you. You need to make sure that what you're doing, whether it's leads, whether it's TV, whether it's billboards, is is, is producing. And Wait I think so. So real quick, somebody just said in the group, uh, the leads are weak. Maybe you're weak, brother. I'm just saying again. Maybe you're weak because how are you going to see the leads? Lead? Yeah, what leads? So a guy named Chance said that 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 the leads are weak. I don't know if they're auto web leads he's saying are weak or leads in general are weak. But my question is this: How? Here's my. I'm sorry. I'm going to jump in, and I'm not an, an auto uh, auto web bitch. You know what I mean? Like I'm not their puppet. So I'm just going to tell you as a national trainer, I know math. The NADA says that the average cost per sale in advertisement is $640 per car. That's a fact. The average cost per sale is $640 per car. And, and follow me on this. Uh, Beth, what is the national average right now for auto web leads? And I know different markets, different things, but give me a, a medium. 300 cost per sale. Okay. Yeah. But give me a per lead. What I'm saying is per lead. A cost per lead? Yeah. Yeah, you're probably looking at about eighteen dollars. Okay, so then then it's actually less than three hundred, and you need to restate that because follow me on this. Unless the dealers suck, because wait, wait, wait. Well, so, depending on the closing rate. So yeah, yes, 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 so yes, yes, yes. yes. Closing rate. Okay, because but that has nothing to do with your leads. That has to do with the person closing them. Because here's the <laughs> math. True. If you spend eighteen dollars per lead, chance. Okay, if you spend eighteen dollars per lead, uh, oh, it says it's from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, Glenn Roth. So he's just, okay, I'm not coming at Chance, but I love that you brought that up though, Chance. Seriously. He said, no, 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 no. It's Glenn, it's, it's Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. I remember now. I didn't know what you're talking about. So follow me on this Chance though, is that, but you brought up a good thing. I, I owe you 10 bucks because you, this is perfect timing. Is that if your average cost per lead, I mean, a cost per sale is 640 per car for the average dealership, right? 640 per car. Beth just said it's $18 per lead. So Beth, if we bought a hundred leads, that's eighteen hundred dollars. Is my math correct, Jason? Right. Yeah. That's okay. Exactly now, right. now, if you are at a ten percent closing ratio, ten percent. <laughs> that's one hundred eighty. It's a hundred and eighty dollars <laughs> per car sold. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's just say that you are slow, slow. I mean, like really slow, right? And you had a five percent closing ratio, right? Five percent. What is that number? That's three hundred and sixty dollars per car sold in advertisement, which is still a little bit more than half of what NADA's average is. Do you see what I'm saying? So he's saying hilarious. I love it. I'm just having fun, brother. I'm having fun here. And so for me, when dealers say, and I know that Chance wasn't saying this, Chance was just playing, what have you, but I'm just saying for everybody listening though, how could you say that, that leads suck? I mean, 
even if you suck closing the leads at a 5% closing ratio, you're still $300 less than NADA average. And here's a little secret. If you keep it real with yourself, you know, at night when you close your eyes before you go to bed and you just keep it real when it's quiet, think about this. That number's bullshit at 640 per car. Let me explain. Here's how the NAD gets that number. They said that the average dealership spends $64,000 in advertising and the average dealership sells 100 cars. Beth, is that, that's how they come up with this from your knowledge, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, right. that's, that's not real. That's dumb dealer math because we're not factoring that, I don't know, that you are a Mitsubishi dealership or you're a Ford dealership or you're a Toyota dealership or whatever. So it's not factoring in at all. You know, people come into the dealership because of proximity, because of location, because of franchise, or because, you know, a friend, family member works there, or because they broke down and they're desperate and they need to buy a car. And guess what? You happen to be the local dealership. So follow me. When you take all that into consideration, I... Sean V. Bradley, CSP of Dealer Synergy, say it's closer to $1,000 in true marketing. Because again, I don't believe whatever number you have, whoever you are, the internet director, the marketing manager, the GM or the owner, if unless you're able to validate that that ad dollar literally legitimately went to a sale, then that's towards branding, frequency, marketing. There's a difference of, of selling versus branding, frequency, and marketing. So again, at least with leads, they're unequivocally, transparently clear. I spend $1,800 in a month. I get 100 leads. And out of these 100 leads, I've sold 10 cars. My average cost per sale in advertising verifiable is $180, car, $180 per car sold. Jason, would you agree with this? Yes. Okay, cool. So Jason, what would you say is like, like a a fair closing ratio from third party leads? What would you say? Uh, 10%. 10%, right? Okay. So again, now remember this folks, that means if you have a hundred leads, 90 people did not buy a car. And I got to say this to you, I hate calling them leads, but everybody calls them leads. The CRM calls them leads. The lead source provider calls them leads, but these are not fucking leads. These are buyers. These are people that proactively reached out and said, I want to buy a car. And especially if they're used car leads, AKA used car buyers, they're putting actual VDP stock numbers in, in, in stock units. So once we stop thinking these, these things as, as leads and Beth, to your point, that's why I believe, and I'm gonna get my soapbox cause I'm short and I want to be seen in the bleachers is this. I believe that people only follow up with, for 10 days, you know, with, with this because they don't, they don't see value in them. They're like, these are not real people. These are not real buyers. These are just leads. You know what you do? You wipe your ass with leads cause they're, they're not really important. But if you looked at this in, in a different paradigm and said, holy shit, here is a publicly traded company that's made over a billion dollars in profit, you know, since they've been in existence. They're directly responsible for over a hundred million cars sold, and they have invented automotive internet sales. Maybe I should not treat these as worthless ass leads. I should really treat these on what she's like, preach. Because you know what this is like, Beth? This is like when Barack Obama you know, did that speech and the comedian was the angry guy was translating Barack's speech. I'm saying shit you can't say because you're a publicly traded company. I don't work for anybody. So I could say, <laughs> keep it real. And she's like, she, she's like this. Uh, you can't see her hands, but she's like, yes, tell him. Yeah, because this needs to be said. If we stop treating these, these things as leads and treat them what they are, buyers, their opportunities to do business, you will treat them with more respect, more tenacity, more consistency, and guess what's going to happen? I don't know. Maybe you'll have better results, higher engagement, higher conversions. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. All right, let's wind this down before I turn around and have a heart attack. You know what I mean? <laughs> is that, uh, Beth, what else would you say is, is uh, really important uh, that, that dealers are still missing the boat with? I, I think it's just having a process. I mean, it sounds very simple, but ha- just having a process in place. Whether, I mean, from start to finish, from the CRM, from everything, I think just having – something that they follow in a guideline and that is implemented from top down is one of the key things that I think every dealership does needs to. And it, I mean, it, it gets hard with personnel change. You know, there's a lot of change of personnel and that sometimes is effective, but I think having a process, I think that is one of the biggest things. Ah, let's talk about that for a second here. 
man, I, dealers change people like Harry, Katy Perry changes clothes. That song back in the day, they just there's attrition is it, it wreaks havoc when you have a 70 to 80 percent attrition ratio. It's like it's constant musical chairs. This is a problem because even if you get your Internet department, your BDC or salespeople in rhythm, if they finally understand how to engage these buyers, not these leads, then they're gone, and then you got to start the process over and over again. Jason, you have a high-level BDC internet department, and, and, and you worked, you know, previously at another high, high-volume internet department that you you took from seventy-five to two hundred and fifty-six units. How important is having the right staff and the right amount of staff? Let's talk about that for a couple minutes. Yeah, the the right people to me is the more important thing. And then you can focus on the the amount, but the, I mean. The first thing here we thought of is just getting the right people. I mean, I haven't, maybe two people have dropped out, you know, since we started here in uh, May, but the previously at the other employer, it, it took probably two or three years of just kind of filtering through people until we, you know, found the six or eight correct people or right people for us that were bought in, you know, and bought into the process and, and you just bought into the whole overall goal of the dealership. And it's the same thing here. And it's, that's what everybody is doing here, and that's why all of those people are here. It's not just here. It has to be the whole company-wide. You have to have buy-in and, a, and the right people in place for this all to be successful. Here's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also add to this. I, I keep saying it, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm – I'm, it just it, it, is this thing on? <laughs> is this thing on? Because I, I don't understand. I keep saying the same shit over and over again. Dealers are upside down. Dealers are upside down. They're staffing their stores where the business is not at. I don't, I don't get how most dealerships have 10, 15, 20 salespeople, you know, six, eight managers, two, three F and I, and they're selling X amount of cars. But yet, yet. They have a thousand fresh leads in a month, eight hundred to a thousand fresh leads in a month, and they have the residual flow factor. That means, remember, we started this conversation that there's a ninety day buying cycle. So on on February first, for example, if you ran a report in whatever CRM you have that said how many active leads do I have that are ninety days or less from the internet and phone department, if you have a, if you have eight hundred fresh leads, I'm going to tell you right now, you're looking at probably twelve to fifteen hundred carryover leads. So if I start February first with 1,500 carryover leads. So that means I have 1,500 leads that are 90 days or less. And then in the month of February, I get 1,000 leads, right? That means I have an opportunity of 2,500. You know how many people they usually have for that? Two people. Two to three people, and usually they treat the internet director like the bastard manager of the dealership, the lowest level person in the dealership with the least amount of respect. And they usually have 10 times the amount of traffic and 10 times the amount of responsibility. Jason, you have been blessed to work for two dealer principals that believe in you and believe in your internet skills and believe in the internet department. But you've been through enough of my conferences and all these you know, online forums to realize that most internet directors do not not have the respect and the resources that you have. Talk about that, though. Yeah, but talk about it after these messages. Auto Credit Express is the leader in subprime auto financing. For over 20 years, we have served the online consumer working to match the best dealers with consumers who need their help securing financing. With more than 250,000 leads per month, Auto Credit Express is the authority for dealers who understand that the special finance deal generates a higher gross profit. We've worked hard to innovate our solutions, bringing you buyer assist to drive consumer text engagement, building out robust solutions to help the underserved Spanish speaking community. We now deliver proof of income on our leads through our proprietary STIPS feature and are building dealer branded social media marketing campaigns to help you, the dealers, build your brand. Contact Auto Credit Express today to learn how we can help you own your market for subprime finance sell more cars with higher gross profit and partner with auto credit express today mention the millionaire car salesman podcast for a special discount today at the very first dealer e-process keynote gino Ciparoni and sam Vukas introduced new tools and strategies to drive conversion new designs to increase customer engagement and new technologies to dominate the competition visit dealereprocess.com forward slash keynote to watch and see what's new in 2021 yeah i mean it's uh you're they're spot on again man just like pretty much all the whole time here but i mean it's 
I, I mean, I just don't get it. It's if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. I mean, you were on a clubhouse call with me on Sunday, and we had that um, dealership, and I can't remember where it was now because we had multiple conversations going on. But just about how they, he basically said we threw a bunch of money at it, and um, you know we put one person in place, and then we just kind of gave up on it. And now we're thinking about trying it again, and it's like, it's kind of like doing subprime. You can't really special finance. You can't really dabble in it. You kind of got to go all in, or it's going to continue to fail. You're going to have it's not going to work because you're replacing people. You're changing. Oh, well, that didn't work. Let's get rid of that. I mean, you, if you're going to do this, you got to do it right. You got to get. If you don't know how to do it, you should reach out to someone like yourself or you know whoever to to get assistance with it because it it makes a world of difference to have the right people in place, coming the right processes, you know, and not rotating through people. And like that's kind of what Bess was saying with these processes and and with the people too. We keep going back to it, but. I, I believe that if you don't go all in and you don't get support from the top down, this would fail. These two dealerships that I've been at in the last 10 years, one for about eight years now here since June, they the BDCs don't work if they're not supported, at least from the owner. I mean, that's who you need to support from the most. And then as time goes on, you know, if everybody can start seeing results and true, you know, true results, then people are going to buy into it. And that's what happened where I was previously. It took a while, um, and then everybody got on board. And that's what's starting to happen here at this particular location, you know, where I'm at now at Platinum. Everybody's kind of buying it, has bought into the process, and we're looking to push it forward and, and go, all, go, all, go all in. What you just said, I want to echo, you have to have the buy-in from the dealer principal or the general manager or both. You know, you need the executive leadership to be able to say, this is how we're doing business here, because it's not the future. It is the, it's either your present or it's going to be your your past, meaning you're going to get consolidated because somebody's going to eat your lunch. Because when you have a director like we're interviewing right now against the average person, uh, they're going to destroy you. He has an unfair competitive edge because not only is he gifted at what he does, but he's got the full resources of the dealer principal and the dealership. Uh, Beth, for you, you know, because you 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 know you sell a lot of leads and and third party provider resources and things like that. Would you say that Jason's correct that a lot of times a lot of problems that that dealerships have when they're not successful with leads is because they don't really have the executive buy in or the executive execution to adhere to the plan? Yeah, I think I I hope when I sign up any of my dealerships, I want to know that the GM's on board at least. And down, we make every effort to reach out to the GM because we want the GM involved. From he can reiterate, so he understands where the leads are coming from. So he understands. So the BDC understands, and you do. You have to get it from dealer, principal, owner, down, everything on board. I, I agree a hundred percent because if you know one's off, then there's there's a kink in the stream. Yeah, I mean, typically what you would get, you know, a lot of places probably is how many appointments do you have? Sean does it. He does the better voice, but do it like he always does. Where are my appointments at? I mean, they don't really, if they don't understand what you just said, that that's, that's what you get. And then it ends up, it just falls apart. Cause what nobody's Jason, patient. What Jason is saying is that it cracks me up. Managers have no idea what's going on, but you know what they do is like, how many appointments you got? What's going on? What, what, how many appointments you got? Because the DP or the GM <laughs> is on the sales manager's GSM's ass. Well, what's going on? So what they do, shit rolls downhill. They just, they have no idea what's going on, how it's going on. They're just like, when their ass is on the line or they're struggling or they need to hit a number, they're just like, what's going on? Where are the appointments at? That's when there's interest where it's like, where's the appointments at? Not, not giving a flying, uh, you know what I mean? How we get them here. Why are we getting them here? It's just like, oh, where are my appointments at? Where are my appointments at? All right? That's there the, was. There you go. There they go. All right. So, Jason, we're going to wind this down. I want to give you the opportunity, man, because I talked a lot because I wanted to just make sure that we were able to articulate, you know, all the stuff that we did. But, you know, like you said, you've been doing this for over 10, 11 years or wait a minute. What is it now? Like 12 years in your career now? Oh. Yeah, it's a little over 10. Over 10. So I'm sorry. I can't count very well. Um, so over 10 years, can you just like close out and just say in your 10 years, you know, especially with your profound national success, what would you say are some tips that you would advise, uh, dealers and internet directors, both, you know what I mean? Like on an executive level and on a middle management level running a department, what's the most important things if they want to be able to achieve anything close to what you're doing and maybe even more? Well, I mean, I think obviously, you know, you got to connect with the right people. I think I've been very fortunate with the two places I've been that the dealership or the dealer principals, principals have surrounded me with, you know, solid people um, with the ability to have, you know, a relationship with you 
um, you know, previously a relationship kind of doing Grant Cardone's platform. I've been, in, you know, I've gotten to go down there twice uh, to their, you know, to his company. And I, I think that yeah. you should never stop training, obviously. I mean, I think you should continue learning something, you know, always be looking. I always watch webinars. I chime in and out. Of, I listen in and out of Clubhouse. I'll throw, Grant, I'll throw a little bit of Grant up on my computer, of, you know, on YouTube or something just to get me going. So, I mean, I, and again, then when that happens, then I think it becomes the people. You've got to surround yourself with the right people. And then that means, you know, bringing the better people in and setting accountability for your team and, and then holding people accountable to follow through with it so you don't have the attrition uh, issue that you were talking about. Amen. I would I would agree 1000%, man. It's been a pleasure to watch your career okay. and watch you crush it. Beth, uh, I'm going to let you actually uh, close it out from the auto web level and the lead source provider level. So we talked about what uh, dealers do messed up or they don't do. What would you say is the, the, the one or two things that they should always focus on if you know what I mean, if, if they want to be successful doing this? Yeah, I'm easy. The only th- I mean, there's, like you said, there's probably just two things follow up and process are my two if nothing you take away from today it's follow up and process so i think as long as you put us have a process in place and follow up to that 90 day mark for at least for the new then you're going to have a success all right and then i'm going to say the ultimate close out right here is two things folks if you're listening to this one if you have any questions about your third-party provider strategy, your lead radius, new car, used car, special finance, your competition, Beth, can you do me a favor? You know what I mean? Because I don't normally let vendors all up in here and stuff like that. Um, can you give your information? Because I, I want to, I'm going to pimp you, uh, you know, with leads. You know what I mean? Like I want to, I want to offer you as a resource that if anybody needs any help for reviewing their third-party providers, you know, you know, even if they're not auto web, I, th- I, th- I think that you know you should. Do me a favor. I, that's pretty bold, but I would appreciate if you do me a favor and help people in this group just by answering questions, yep. by looking at their their contracts, looking at their lead to, lead source provider territory, whatever it is, to make sure that they're doing it the right way. Can you do that? How can they get a hold of you? Yep, you can call me or text me on my cell. It's four zero four eight four nine eight five five six, or you can email me Beth dot Bartlett B A R T L E T T at autoweb dot com. And uh, you could also obviously comment if you're in the Facebook yeah, group right below. now, comment yeah. below. But if you're on the podcast, there's nothing to comment below. So just don't be looking below because you're like, what's going on here? And then <laughs> yeah. Jason, uh, um, my friend, brother, uh, again, you are a high level Internet director and you are, I think, listed as a mentor in the Millionaire Car Salesman group platform. If somebody's got a question for you, can they hit you up in the Millionaire Car Salesman group or DM you? Absolutely, man. All right, good. And then I look forward to seeing you both on Clubhouse uh, next week. All right. All right. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thank you so much. Thanks, right, Jason. Thank Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye-bye. Beth. I appreciate you. So there you have it, the Millionaire Car Salesman Podcast. This podcast comes to you every week from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If you have a question about the show or would like the chance to become a guest, feel free to contact us directly at 856 856- Five four six two four four zero, or email us at millionairecarsalesman at gmail.com This program is a presentation of Synergy Records produced by Tiana Mick and L.A. Williams production and engineering by L.A. Williams The Millionaire Car Salesman podcast is hosted every week by L.A. Williams and the Millionaire Car Salesman himself Sean V. Bradley The Millionaire Car Salesman podcast can be found everywhere, so please don't forget to review, subscribe to, and share the show. Thanks for listening to the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast, and remember, where I'm from, money provides options. The Millionaire Car Salesman podcast is sponsored in part by Internet Brands, Dealer E-Process, VinQ, and AutoWeb. If you enjoyed this podcast, then make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave us a review. You know, let some other folks know about it. Oh, and don't forget to join the Millionaire Car Salesman Group on Facebook. We'll see you there.